Welcome to Shadow View. This is COVID-19. Why 50 million tests delivered on Monday won't solve the problem. We're going to pretend here for a second. I'm American Motors. They're not in business anymore, so we're going to use them as a guinea pig. I'm the government. I come to them. I say, under the Defense Production Act, you're going to create 50 million tests, and I want them delivered on Monday. American Motors says, okay, we're going to comply. We try and get swabs from Italy. That's the number one producer in the world, right where the virus hit and was very strong. But we get them. We get the 50 million swabs. We need personal protective equipment. We get masks from China right in the Wuhan area. That province is, is where they produce the world's largest amount of masks. So, but we get them. We get 50 million of them. We put all these test kits together. We do an amazing job. We disperse them, get them out to the government on Monday. The government disperses them to all the states on Wednesday. Amazing. We test 50 million Americans in seven days. This is an NAT test, a nucleic acid test. It takes 48 hours to get the results. A person has to be quarantined for that 48 hours. Otherwise, the test is really worthless. Shouldn't have tested. But everyone stays quarantined, all 50 million people. But guess what? We've overwhelmed the labs. It takes specialized labs to process these kinds of tests. It takes specialized equipment. It takes trained technicians. We don't have the lab resources to process all these tests. So now the results are a week down the road, two weeks down the road, a month down the road, and we need all these people to self-quarantine during that time. And really, honestly, a negative test doesn't mean a lot. We want to know who's positive and who they've come in contact with and really just test that small group of people. That would be meaningful and then quarantine that small group. So testing everyone in America is a totally dumb, irrational idea. It doesn't work. It isn't what we need to do. But that's not the case. So anyway, so we get all these tests out. A month later, we get the results. And basically, all of that information is tainted. We need good information. There's a couple of different tests being worked on. Uh, one in Colorado, one at MIT that uses Sherlock. It's developed at MIT. It's a process that is still an NAT test, but it only takes an hour to get the results, and it doesn't take all the specialized lab work. That's the kind of test that we need. It's similar to a pregnancy test. You put a tongue depressor in your mouth, and you get the results within an hour. It can be read out without having to have lab techs and all this other stuff. It's a low cost way to go. It is like the other NATs where you do get false positives. So you definitely can have people that are not sick testing as sick, but that's probably the way you want to err. Um, there are also protein-based tests that also take an hour to get the information that are in the works. All of these are being submitted to the FDA. It may take six months. It's getting fast-tracked, and it still may take six months. We hope not. But we don't want to rush that process either. We don't want to make people sick by having a problem with the test. We don't want to get false results that we're uh, building models off of and working from. Uh, we want good data. Good data is the only way that this will work. And so we want the FDA process and procedures to be in place to make sure that the data that we collect is useful. Otherwise, we're wasting our time. We're having people depend on things that aren't real. The other thing that's not real is the media today. You can't depend on them for anything. Uh, Governor Christie's son came to him, he's 23, and said, Dad, you know, I can't watch CNN, I can't watch Fox, they're all lying. And I'm paraphrasing that a bit. You can go back and watch Governor Christie's video. Um, it's the same for me. 
I can't depend on the media. I have to go back and I have to actually look at the video and see what President Trump says. They're saying that he said, I'm going to adjourn Congress. Like he's going to have the National Guard forcefully come in and pull every congressperson out of Congress and shut it down. <laughs> that's, that's what they're making it sound like. Complete idiots. They, they, believe, they think that the American people are going to believe this crap. It's, it's asinine. What the president said was, if Congress will not work together to fill the vacancies in his cabinet, in particular Democrats, then maybe they should just adjourn and let him do it. Kind of reasonable for a frustrated person trying to work on, under a horrible circumstance. I mean, how would you like to be president today? Really demanding, uh, it, it's a crazy job. So that's what he said. The media is totally reporting it wrong. I think the three problems in America, the three major problems is COVID-19, number one, of course. Number two is the media. They're not helping. They're lying. They're misreporting things. They have their own personal political agenda. He, he called them the, the fake media, and now they decided, okay, well, when he, he runs again, we're going to show him, well, they're, they're trying to spin up whatever they can to make him look bad, and it's a bad situation. Everybody's going to look bad. The, the number of mistakes that have been made and missteps, are, there's plenty of blame to go around. And Congress can be, be blamed, too, because they can create a framework. They can pass laws. They can do things to make testing more available. They can do all kinds of stuff. Their hands aren't tied behind their back. They aren't being said, oh, please don't help. In fact, it's the opposite. It's like get together, cross the aisles, Democrats and Republicans. This is a crisis time. Work together. The American people are tired of the bullshit. Um, so anyway, that's, that's my little soapbox thing anyway for the day. Uh, so looking around the nation, the numbers were going down. They were looking really good. Um, by the way, congratulations to California. What a great job you guys are doing. Congratulations to the whole West Coast, really. Uh, Oregon, uh, the state of Washington. Those places, it's going to come out in the new census. Those places are way more populated than we think they are, uh, statistically. And they've done a great job holding down the virus in those areas. Louisiana. You got into a bad situation and you've been working your way out of it. Amazing. Uh, New York took some back steps the last three days. Rhode Island in particular, because of infiltration from New York and Boston, uh, their numbers went up and are looking kind of bad. But there's lots of states where it looks like it's starting to plateau, where the numbers are looking pretty good. We need to keep social distancing up though. We don't want to relax quite yet. I know it seems like a year. It does to me anyway. It doesn't seem like I've ate in a restaurant, went to a movie for a whole year. Um, it's absolutely horrible. I could never imagine this a few months ago. But get a mask. Put it on. When you go out to a grocery store, you go out to the bank, you're not protecting yourself. You're not afraid of getting the virus, so I'm putting this on. It's not less of a man to, to wear a mask. What it is, is you're trying to protect other people. You need to do that because you might bring some of this stuff home to an older person, uh, a grandpa, your mom, and you want to protect other people in the public. You're doing a service, you're committing to the cause, you're jumping in and being helpful. Even if it's all you can do, even that's the only thing you can do today because you're staying at home, you don't have a lot of money, put a t-shirt on. Put it over your mouth and nose when you go out. If you're working on a construction site, wear a mask, wear some gloves, 
try to help other people stay healthy. And in turn, hopefully they do the same for you. This is an all-in kind of thing. We need to work together. Doesn't matter, Republican, Democrat, Hindu, Muslim, it, it doesn't matter. We're all in this together. The virus doesn't care who you are. It doesn't care how old you are. Because really, even statistically, if you're young, you won't get the virus. It doesn't mean you can't get the virus. And that's something that is really interesting. So we have a lot of data coming in. We have the number of confirmed cases. We have the number of confirmed deaths. And those numbers are matching some modeling for sure. We don't have a lot of recovered cases coming in. They're not reporting those. Those would subtract from the amount of active cases. There's lots and lots of states that aren't reporting those numbers. It's my understanding they're going to start working on those numbers. Or they're going to start reporting those numbers. But those numbers are actually pretty big. The other thing that we don't know is how many people have actually been subjected to the virus. It would be nice to have a model that showed some sort of accuracy of how many people will actually contract it, will actually have a viral load even. See, I think there's some people that won't even have a viral load when they're subjected to the virus, even for long periods of time. They're just naturally immune to it. But that doesn't mean that you can't take it back on your skin to your family who's maybe not immune. So that's why you want to be safe. You want to be safe for other people, not just yourself. Um, and then there's also a certain segment, and we know that that's 10 to 20 percent, or at least that's what the CDC has been saying, of people that won't show any symptoms but are carriers of the virus. We don't know all the data, but we'd like to because that will give us the information going forward of what to do to open up America, to keep it safe, and to move on. This virus isn't just going to go away. We're going to have to have a vaccine, of course. We're going to have to have treatments that actually work, a pill that you can take and be done with it in a week or two, and you don't die from it. Once those things come into place, we can all feel safer, we can all feel secure, and we can move forward. But a vaccine is a ways off. Even with all the effort, and there's over 62 studies going on right now for vaccines, and there's some promise there, don't get me wrong, the mumps vaccine took four years, and that was considered quick. So if it's done in a year, year and a half, that would be amazing. If they can do it quicker than that, that would be great too, but remember we need to do a lot of human studies because we don't want to enhance the virus. <laughs> Some of the vaccines are actually enhancing the virus, making you sicker. So we can't have that. We can't send that out to 50 million people and have made the situation worse. We have to be smart. We have to do the right things. Everyone's impatient. Trust me, I am so impatient. But we have to do the right thing. So let's work together. Let's have a great week. Let's stay safe. Shadow View out.